Han got it last year. He's trying to get it this year. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going into the grand final. We have Avic and Rafa, and it's starting now. Now we've got uh, Avic with the Galena straight away meeting over at the Rockets on the doom of Shane Hendrickson. And quickly, Avic will collect the lightning gun. Speaking of the LG, that's definitely been a weapon that Avic has used flawlessly over the course of this entire tournament. That and Rail together has been the deadly duo combo that we've seen a lot of players, you know, bank on. And not to mention the tribe out there does a hell of a lot of damage as well. You can see Rafa already respecting this. Gonna be sitting very far away. And we're gonna see the double pickup come in. We get the respective power-ups in just a second or two. But Avic not investing in towards the rail just yet. I always find it interesting how a game of this level, how the players decide to play the first selection of rounds. Do they want to fill each other out a little bit? Are they gonna go in to show that neither of them are afraid? Right now it seems a little bit more tentative. No one wants to make the first mistake. And we see that they kind of allow each other to control their sections of the map as they kind of rotate in unison. I see some moments coming in just a few seconds. Avic already has an idea of where Raph is going to be. And again, still no rail for him. It's actually out of tribal shots. That's one of the first times I've seen people run out of tribal ammo. You see the LG come in. Rafa wants this fight. He wants it now. The LG switch him as well. Oh. But that's going to be Avic. Pick up the first frag here of our grand finals. And he's still got a totem to uh, utilize. He's keeping it, it seems, for combat in case something happens off the spawn. Something Raph has been doing a lot throughout the tournament and has had great effect in the later stages is getting those refrags going. He still doesn't even go for a rail here. He actually prioritized making sure Rafa wasn't coming in from the rocket side instead of going for that weapon. The LG comes out. Rafa's going to be the first one to do so. The rockets as well. He's going to try to get away from this Ooh. one. The rail lands on top of this. But Rafa will escape through the teleporter, get back up to upper T, and take up the Mega. Yeah, there's not so many items ever, but he just hits a straight Rocket Rail, it doesn't quite hit. LG's on him and he can't find the spam shot. That is going to be Rafa tying things up straight away. And he really needs some resources. Fortunately, the LG room has got a bit of armor, got a bit of health. A piercing sight right in mid combat. Looking for a minute, possibly from Avec, but they are both so low. Avec had to have seen the piercing sight being used out of Rafa too, so he's going to back off. He's going to wait for Mega in a few seconds. Rafa trying to restack his health, so maybe has a chance to contest Mega, but that's been already secured. And Avic with no armor, he's got to retreat back, but that eye armor shouldn't be up for a little bit of time since I saw Rafa pick it up before. The rockets have come in. Avic is stuck in a corner, but can he fight his way out? No, tries to get down Banana. There's a couple of health bubbles there, but Rafa not letting him escape with some solid LG accuracy. Heavy, the next port of call. Avic with plenty of time to get things done. He probably wants to navigate his way around some weaponry. But he's got position over at the heavy if he wants it, and he absolutely does. And the orb is Ooh. available. Ooh, that's a little uncharacteristic. Rafi saw even a little bit of upset facial expressions there as you miss those double rails, especially with the piercing side on yeah. top of that. But again, Raph is a pro player. Things like that won't get to him. He's going to maintain this focus, and Avic already playing down one champion. He's got two minutes of time to work with here. Nice little predictive rocket. Spots Avic. He can fight for this heavy position. We do have an orb. He takes it out. Avic over on the rail gun. He's low on HP, and that lightning gun from Rafa. That is going to secure the first round of the grand final. Possibly putting him in a good stead for later stages here. But like you said, in these first few rounds, we expect these players to fill each other out. This is a best of five. We've got all the time here to work with. Yep. And Rafa, I mean, we, we always talk about him downloading people. The more time you give him, the better he gets. I think it's important to note as well that normally Rafa would pick uh, Veil of Nath as his first map, but he went with Awoken, and I believe just to speculate, that would be based off how Avec played versus Cooler in the semi-final, because that was actually the most convincing map in the semis that we saw. So I, I think that Rafa is looking to get the same kind of level of security with it and hope to play Veil of Nath a little later on. I believe it's yeah. the third map selection. And look to get like potentially two easier maps under his belt. I mean, the thing is, we even heard Dehang say back at PGL that Veil of Nath is one of his, oh. okay, it's one of his weakest maps, and yet, I don't think Rafa's lost a single time on that map, at least since then. We see the orb come in. Avic wants to force this fight. The mega has been secured out of Rafa, though the LG is looking pretty decent as well. And that's going to be another quick frag coming through. Yeah, Avic hanging around for a long time. He, he wasn't really able to get the damage output he needed. Rafa outstacked him anyway. He had the mega health. Not really the challenge that he should be going for. However, he has the visor. There is piercing sight available. He could have already started using it, but he should know that Heavy is up next. Great attack with the LG. So much damage from him, but he's not able to quite follow up. There's the machine gun out of the teleporter exit. 
Oh my ball. god, the rocket, it somehow manages to connect. He is rewarded with the mega health. Maybe we can see a little bit of showtime from him. There's a great little pin against the wall of the back of Heavy 2 to make sure Rafa can't escape that situation. And a great switch to Machine Gun as well, really showing he can do the max amount of damage with the weaponry he needs in those situations. Navik with all the weapons to work with. Not able to actually deny much weaponry uh, from Rafa here as the orb has come in. He's not going to take this one, though. The LG cannot go up the bounce pad just yet. Seen Rafa retreat. He's able to go back in with the LG himself. The rail could be enough here. He could get the frag, but he's missed double shots. The third one to come through, and Avic is struggling to hit these shots. Rafa somehow escapes. He just can't quite land the last shot that he needs. There should be... Oh, there's actually light armor right up at up a T. Finds another, but again, and we saw some piercing sight misses from Rafa, and unfortunately for Avic, he's also going to get some... Find some more ammunition. Oh, oh wow, we actually get the return shot. Unbelievable. So avic has got time on heavy. The problem is, is that he knows Rafa should be able to have it by now, which almost guarantees he's going to have to give up Mega 2, considering he doesn't have any rockets left, and he can't really combat against the stack that Rafa has. So Avic's still playing the champion down like we saw in the previous round. He's got to find his way to fight back in, and I want to uh -oh. say it's going to have to be towards heavier. Maybe just with shots like that, oh. he hits the double rockets, but well, it's not going to be enough for him. And now Rafa is one round away from taking the first map here. Yeah, you can see uh, a lot of thought going from Avic. <laughs> Figuring out what he's going to have to do next on Awoken to try and get a step ahead in a round. It's not been working for him. I know it didn't work out in the semi-finals, but he's obviously going to be putting everything into this to try and secure a map advantage early on. Let's see, starting off early on with the tri and the LG. Off the back of the Mega pickup. And I'm going to pick up a rail. So a little bit quicker in terms of securing the weaponry you need to fight each other head to head. And we've seen already some, you know, quite a few adaptations in the way these players are starting these rounds, making sure they don't get caught early on. And speaking of getting caught here, it might be Avic or it might be Raph as the rocket has led. He's going to pin him against the wall here. The LG is looking Whoa. fantastic out of Avic. And there we go. It takes the first champion kill of the round. And actually, there's a slight delay going on heavy, so he's going to be able to challenge it straight away. There is a range of that. Rafa does collect it, and it's an orb straight through to LG. Unfortunately for Avic, he can't find it. And Rafa gets so much armor from that. That was such a sick read, too, because he actually threw that past the teleporter in yeah. towards LG and took it. Avic instantly knew the direction he was going. The rocket jump out of Rafa. It's looking good here. Avic down to 8 HP. He will survive for now. He's got to pick up a round? lot of health. I think he just had the other light getting taken. I believe he may have hit some rocket damage, but that means Mega goes over to Rafa. Heavy spawns shortly after. He's not full stack, but he's definitely good enough for the time being. We've got two champions left each, and Rafa still able to get the 3-0. His rocket jumps have been fantastic over the course of this entire dual tournament. Even two, oh. even his rail shots there, as you see him closing out that one. Now down to Avic with his visor up against the two of Rafa. Seems like a story we've been repeating so far in the series about being down a champion here for Avic. Rafa can defend it over Omega. Watch out for those rockets. Again, the rocket jumps coming from him. He lands a brilliant shot. There's the one to clean it up. 3-0 on Awoken. That's a good start to the grand final for Rafa. I got we mentioned the rocket jumps. There are some really, yeah. really cool from movement Omega going to on. Try bolt just to minimize the amount of time it takes to get there and catch him off guard. My favorite of the ones that we saw was earlier on in the map where he did a rocket jump from shotgun over the rail into the heavy in order to control that faster. I just thought that was super slick, and I never see that move. Well, I mean, it, it comes with time and experience, and the amount of time he puts into this is really paying off here because this is his back-to-back -back grand finals in dual major tournaments this year. Not to mention already winning the 2v2 tournament, as we said before, with DeHang, who's supporting him from the crowd. So Rafa's looking good. It looks like, uh, you know, that theory you had about choosing Awoken first because he saw what happened with Avic versus Cooler might yeah. actually come or be true. I'm not expecting it to be this one side at all for the remainder of the series. Um, I think every map now can be really, really, really hard for between both players. Uh, we are going to be going over to Bloodborne. I think yeah. you mentioned that already. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be Avex's selection. So we can see what he's able to pull out there as we shortly go into the champion selection. Um, We've seen some interesting things out of Avic too. Um, yes. He picked Death Knight up against Cooler. I think that was on Corrupted Keep, if I'm not mistaken. I, I haven't seen a lot of Europeans picking Death Knight up until the tournament started, basically. I wonder if what Rafa was talking about during interviews about why Death Knight's useful on certain maps. Right. 
um, uh, because you can kind of predict what health bubbles they want to go to. Some maps have fewer health bubbles than others. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's maybe some sort of a, I mean, inspiration is not really the right word, but getting an I idea mean, for it there. The map he was talking about when referencing that was Veil, vale, uh, yes. Veil's Nath. Uh, Cryptic Keep, I'd say, has a lot more closer grouped up health orbs mm -hmm. to pick up to stop that burn from coming through. But either way, we, we're going to find out in just a few moments what they do decide to go for here. And especially for Avic, I mean, to imagine basically six years since you've been in a grand final. There's got to be pressure on him. I know he's experienced. I know he's, you've been playing for such a long time, it's, but to have that kind of gap? It's the moments you live for, though, really. There's someone like him who was so active back in that time, back in that age. Uh, he was used to playing at the uh, absolute highest levels, and right now he's done all the work he needed for this tournament for him to be at this particular stage. We've got Ranger selected by both players as first pick. Avic will get second with Galena. I suspect a visor will be at the end for the players, but let's see what uh, we have seen Doom as well. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Doom on Blood Run. Well, that's often been when there's a visor ban going in, so I think visor would make sense. Ooh. He's going Slash. All right. I'm I ready. Did not for this. expect to see My Slash on this map. I mean, we have Blood Covenant as our fifth and final map, and that's definitely one you can expect. And we've seen a lot of people over the course of this dual tournament struggle with these light, fast champions. Anarchy, Slash, uh, we saw, I think it was us talks playing against, I want to say, help me out here, Zoot. Who was he playing? Slash? Yeah. Or it was just Anarchy, but you, the point yeah. is, it's so fast. And people like there that we go. Yeah, anarchy. it's really kind of frustrating to yeah. deal with, especially if they play it first and you're not able to deal with the speed because you can yeah. easily pick up an item and transition into a fight. Well, guys, we are moving into the second map. It is Avex pick. We are here in the grand finals of DreamHack Winter 2018, the Quake Champions Invitational. Let's see if Avec can get himself back on his high horse. And uh, right off the beginning, Rapper is going to go with Slash. A little bit of zone control down by the Rel to Mega. And he's now able to collect the heavy armor very comfortably. And he can now go along his way to Rockets and an LG. Well, one thing that Slash does give you on this map is this is one of the harder maps to close in or to close out a, a frag. It's very easy to run away from this one. And we'll speak of run away for an HP left for Rafa. That could have been his death. But Avic's going to be low on HP as well. But if Rafa can somehow get an early champion lead, you could play the long game. If you can keep that distance, if you can keep the, the power ups being built up for yourself, you can keep, you know, potentially win that out on time. Oh, just finds the LG. I think Gravik was waiting for the light armor, hoping that was going to give him the resources needed to finish that fight. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. It would be a viable strategy. One thing that can get you caught out, though, as a, a light champion player is if you're making those rotations and you're fast. And you're predictable. Then... <laughs> So that's the thing, though. Rafa, fortunately for Rafa, he happens to be probably the best player in the world. So <laughs> the predictability, he can, he can definitely work with that. Mega health is up. Avex, the far, by far the closest to it. He will collect it. Not Ooh. too much drama. And he doesn't take the rail, which is incredibly important for him to establish anything going into the remainder of the round. Just has to be a fight here for Avic. We can see the Rafa's missed out on both items. They would retreat back oh. to the double orbs, but that's not going to be enough here. Avic, able to close it on that one. The slash is now off the table in this round, at least. But can Avic maintain this control? Sees the rockets. That's all the information that he needed. I'm curious if Rafa is going to try and orb in. Rafa can be incredibly aggressive, actually, with that dire orb. So he's going to have to watch out. He happens to be nearby. Even if there's a tri bolt, that jump down is absolutely a realistic possibility. And Rafa has to give up this heavy, too. He knows that Avic has the stack. He has a position that LG can be so deadly on that jump, as we've seen so many times today. But now Avic with the stack, the question comes. How is he going to close the distance against Rafa? How is he going to set a trap against a Ranger who can just orb away? Yeah, and that burst damage that you got to deal with. So walking around the corner can already be very, very troublesome. Every little bit of damage helps. Rocket searching for the rail. And most importantly is the control at the moment. Damage can come later. That's brilliant. Free rail for, for Rafa. He hits the rockets on the exit. Now suddenly the armor's gone. He orbs in. Avec trying to get around the corner. But Rafa, he strings together that last rail. And now he gets onto heavy. That was unbelievable damage Rafa was doing all the way through that fight. You might get him on the catch here too. The rockets are hitting out of Avic. He's knocking him around. The damage isn't being done. They do trade frags. But that will be Rafa's round to take. I think Avec's going to be slightly annoyed with himself because he had the full control. He pushed through yeah. the choke point. At that point, you do have to respect a little bit or, you know, get that tri bolt going, get the rockets around the corner, try and make Rafa feel uncomfortable. So when, when he knocked Rafa off the high ground and down towards rail, I think he only had like two rockets left or one rocket. Oh Whoa. my god, the juggle! Uh-oh. 
Rafa's not letting that happen. That is brutal. Rafa was so fast there because he's playing on the slab. Oh, no! Avec, he can't get it, and he's going to have actually the plasma trail securing the kill. So in 20 seconds, Rafa's two frags up. Avex also showing his face around the corner. Maybe hoping this. he can get the shotgun blast going, but that hurts so much. There's the starting shotgun, and there is the second round. You can see Rafa motivating himself through every single kill. I like the plan of Avic though, to be unpredictable, wait around the corner, and if he does come into you, that's 140 damage that you potentially could blast away and pick up an easy frag. But Rafa is just looking unstoppable right now. Again, slash another time, and looks like we won't see Avic getting caught out towards the heavy, at least at the moment. Think. Havoc, he needs a plan. He needs some sort of way to deal with this. Oh my god, he just does so much damage with the plasma drill and the mid-air! It is going to be exchanged by Havoc, so he'll be happy to have gotten rid of the slash. Wow, that rail straight away. Rafa even using the die roll just to get the hell away as he felt the reload. Uh, there wasn't enough time for it. Plain safe. Yeah, that's a good way to explain Rafa and plain calculated to make sure there's not going to be any opportunity for Havoc to build up a lead against you. And Rafa shaking his head here, maybe not happy, he wasn't able to contest heavy, but he's going to lose that, and he should be losing Mega here in a few seconds, especially with Avic hearing Rafa go through the teleporter. So we've got to a similar point that we were last round. Avic has absolutely full control. He's going versus the Ranger. This is where he needs to kind of end it. Rafa has no armor at the moment. He's probably waiting for the light armor to spawn up here. There it is. Remove that. He'll certainly be timing that along the way. And he'll be hoping that he can get the lower light armor too, because Avic's not able to steal it when he's overstacked. Ooh. But that punishing rail from Avic, even though it is exchanged, that's exactly what he needs to be doing. Use the orb, he goes through, he picks up the heavy, the LG from the low ground out of Avic is trying to punish Rafa for going for that play. The Mega will still be secured for Avic, so he lost a little bit of control here. Mostly, you know, you got to credit, credit to Rafa. That was insane, actually. That was Rafa. well done. Like that, that rail he hit going through teleporter was amazing. You can see he did that because he managed to get both of the light armors. That gave him the confidence he needed to make a push on the heavy. And then you know, he utilized the, ability, the uh, mobility from the Dire Orb. And obviously his phenomenal fighting skills. Tribal definitely being more fruitful for Avic. And he hits the rail. Seven health for Rafa just for a second. There is the Mega. It looks like Avic has fought back into control. Speaking about timing lights, we're going to see Rafa potentially wait for that one. Has respawn back in. Avic's going to hear it being picked up, and he's slowly crawling his way forward. Keep in mind, he does have the vision advantage with piercing sight. Whoa. He can set a trap. And with that rail, <clears throat> that rail hitting, there might be an opportunity to actually secure another kill. Avic really needs to find a way to be able to lock this one down. He's got to take advantage of the control, somehow find a way to close the gap. Now that he's going to take the Mega Health in a couple of seconds' time. There's still that short time differential, but it's about closing the gap on Rafa. He, he's got to know that he's hiding up at that nail gun room. He has a very safe place to actually hide. There's so many escapes and so much information gathered from hearing them. And look at this. Actually, right behind him is going to be Avic. He gets the initial exchange with the LG. 24 HP left. And Rafa smartly not going to go through that teleporter. Rabbit could be waiting. He was right in front of Avic. I want to see shotgun there. He could have got shotgun, rockets, something like that. He chose just the LG. I really feel that Avic would have profited with a, just an alternative weapon choice. Either way, Rafa was able to survive this one. And again, timing that light, just like it's any other major item in the map, which right now for him, considering he's not getting the, the heavy or the mega, it is a major item. There it is. Rail exchange. That's always going to favor Avic in these scenarios. However, he's not really got any overstack at all. Rafa's going to get the light armor. There's a couple of seconds until heavy. Rafa going to put some presence towards that. LG, this hurts a lot. It's a lot harder for Avic to dismount this, and he's lost so much. Rocket jump up. There's the orb, and it's going to land another. He's one frag away from getting a second map in the grand final. I really wanted to see Avic rocket jump away from that wall. We see a lot of people do that just to minimize the amount of damage you can take from the LG, especially so you can't get juggled. But again, another rail is going to land. We're going to see Avic go in. I think he's overestimated how much damage he's done to Rafa before. And now he's down to just about 30 HP left. As he's forced to play from behind now, where Rafa is able to get the control himself. Does he even have the light armor over there? Might have been taken recently, but it should spawn soon. Avic's got less than a minute to play to tie this up. He doesn't have his ability up. He must have taken the hourglasses lately. 
And he's going down at LG. Rafa knows exactly where he is. That rocket's it. He looks for the rail. He's not going to close in on the nail gun because it's just too risky. The amount of burst damage you can get with it is insane. Havoc is stuck between a rock and a hard place. It would be truly spectacular if he was able to make a comeback from this. I don't think you could ever count Avic out, to be fair. The place has been able to pull off over the course of this tournament in twos or duel has been amazing. You can see him now being forced to turn up the pace, rushing down Raph the best he can. Raph to try to keep that distance. 15 seconds to go. Orb has been used out of Avic. He's able to spot out Rafa, but with 10 seconds to close this distance, all Rafa needs to do is basically hit one rail or just keep running away. And now with five seconds left to go, you can hear him bouncing down towards LG, but with two seconds left to go, I think that's going to be it, especially with the orb being used. And Rafa now going to be up two to zero. Now, ultimately, we're getting two fairly convincing maps. Blood Run definitely a lot closer than Awoken, I'd say. We had some hard fought rounds in there, but still, Avic yet to get himself on the board. Thing is, even before PGL, people have been wondering, how can we beat Team Liquid? You know, Rafa to hang. PGL, where we saw Rafa just decimate almost every single player he went up against. People are wondering, how do we just even beat Rafa at this point? And I feel like we almost have still no answer for this three months later. Is it just raw determination? Is, is it written in stone already that he's meant to get the double win here? I mean, if we look at the patch that Rafa won PGL on, it was a very ability-heavy patch since it has been changed since, and he's shown he can play with those abilities. He can play Death Knight, instantly burst people down. He can do it with Ranger. Coming into the new patch, he's able to do it with less of those abilities and more of his raw aim and mechanics and, and understanding of the game. He's shown that he can play in any patch and play at a top level. What I really like, though, he goes for that off-pick. You know he was thinking about the Pfizer or the Slash as a last pick on Blood Run, and I really like that he just you know, bit the bullet and said, you know what, I'm going to try it. Because this is something that players won't necessarily expect. They won't necessarily be fully prepared for a, a game against Slash. And he got quite a lot of value from using that champion. Yes, Avic did shut it down after a while, but it had already done the damage at that point. And I thought that was I mean, fantastic. Especially on, on Blood Run, you have Ranger and Slash. So you have Ranger who can easily get to both items. You have Slash who can easily contest and even contest you when you try to go for your first item. Like the, the speed that Rafa can play at, and even beyond that, the speed he's playing at and the decision-making, how quick he's able to do that and understand what he needs to do next has been unrivaled. Yeah, and, well, we can't forget we're going over to Vale of Nath next. This yeah. is another very much Rafa pick. This could be, this literally yeah. could be it. We did see him drop it to Kelson earlier in the semi-final. Avec absolutely capable of doing it himself, but it's going to require him to dig deep. We're here in the champion picks here for what could be the last map of the grand final. There's the visor of the Galena. Ranger with Rafa and also going with the Death Knight as he's talked about so much. Yeah, okay. So the Death Knight, as Rafa said before, if you just join us, good pick on this map. At least as he's theorizing to us, which I mean, he's shown it's true. It's because of the distance between the health bubbles. You're going to get a lot of tick damage in and you're going to be able to tell what direction they're going to go. You're going to be able to predict which health bubble they're going to go for so you can meet them there and try to finish off that frag. So Avic, I'm assuming he's been able to see this. I'm assuming he has some sort of plan for this. Well, here we are, guys. This could be it. Can Rafa lock it down here on Vale of Nav, the third map of the grand final? Avex got to come out all guns blazing. Here we go, and we are going to be getting Rafa off the beginning. He has the Galena. Galena also selected by Avic, who gets a decent spawn actually off the beginning. Rockets will be quickly collected from Rafa, but that nail guy, he's just held mouse one. He's done a lot of damage. The light armors that Avic would have got have gone, and he might even continue chasing this. Avic's taken so much damage already off the bat here. 200 to the 126. Now the LG's coming out of Rafa, and he has the stack advantage. He has the positional advantage too, and that's going to be the first frag going over to Rafa. Havoc now on the visor is going to have the vision. He does actually catch him towards Mega, but the problem is the timing was so perfect out of Rafa. He gets it with the rocket jump oh. and knocks him into the turret with the rocket. Totem with the rocket finishes it off, and that's going to be now two quick frags. What a savage bounce off there. He just almost gravitated right towards the totem. Rafa's only on 100 health. We've got sub 10 seconds still heavy. He has a totem there just protecting it on the teleporter exit. Avec trying to get some information. There is the round front. He does all. Oh, this is a very good play from Avec. He can get himself on the board, but he's not overstepping the line. I think I think he possibly could have then if he had the LG, unless that was denied by uh, Rafa briefly. There's definitely a chance he could have pulled that one off, but instead of going for the safe play, knowing he can pick up one of these major items instead of potentially losing out on both of them. 
Uh, firing from the low gun, Rafa looking for the LG. Avic not quite hitting those rails, unfortunately. And I started going for the third peak and the third try. He's just going to back off for now. Yeah, it feels like Avic isn't hitting quite all the shots that we were seeing earlier in the tournament. His aim has been unreal at DreamHack Winter. But now, it's really time to deliver that once again, just like he did versus Cooler. Rail should be picked up here in just a second for Avic, but he might actually get locked in this into the spot. We have the stack advantage for Rafa. LG's coming through, and Avic will escape for now. The rocket oh, jump up oh, again out oh. of Rafa. It makes it look so easy. Now up 1-0 to zero here. This is just trickles of damage that are happening almost constantly, it feels like, owing the favor of Rafa. And Avic, he's not able to return the damage at all. You see that pure focus there from Rafa. The job still not done. Jumping over to Heavy, not going to the rocket straight away. It's a very same start. Pick. But yeah, that's literally good. same start. He's very comfortable with that. With that setup, Avic hasn't done anything against it. He'll get the lightning gun. That's a good bit of a vertical LG from Avic, actually. The unfortunate part is that even with Rafa going for that start, going for nail initially, Avic's not able to deny the LG or the rockets away from Rafa, and that's just going to be oh. really important because you can see what Rafa can do with the weapons. Avic's running into the totems at the moment. He's getting close. His combat skills have been brilliant, but he's just making these moves that Rafa seems prepared for. Two rockets. Is this just a formality? Right off the spawn, he gets LG'd into the ground. Is this surely going to be one more round for Rafa needed? And he can be the champion. I saw even a sigh of relief out of Rafa on his face in that second frag because he did get rushed down and did get pushed very low into the brink of the Fortune losing out. But this could be it, Zoo. We could be ending the entire thing here in a quick 9-0 sweep. Very, very quick. Avec, Royal Spawn, he does have the totem to help him out, heal him up, and has the heavy behind him. He's usually been getting the LG Mega Side Spawn. This is the first time he's changed from that, so maybe... Maybe he's got an alternative plan with this, something else that he can conjure up. He's got to really, really dig deep. I know he put so much in to that match versus Cooler, but there's... Is there there's any gas left in the tank? Yeah. That's the question. I mean, being pushed to five maps like that, it's going to be tough, but Avic can do it. He's proven in the past. He's not going to go quietly into this night as he looks for the tribal damage as Rafa comes through the teleporter. Mega and Heavy both going to be up. Rafa's going to try to get over towards Heavy. I think he's trying to wait to see if Avic goes in this direction as well, which he's going to be doing. The rocket not quite going to hit. The rail will land, though, and Avic gets lucky. He doesn't get LG'd on that drop. Well, there is a totem that's going to hit. Avic is still going to push forward. He didn't get all of the health, actually. Oh my god, that rocket was insanely close. I think he went down to rockets to get some 25 health. No, he didn't. He pushed through to Nailgun. Hunter near that teleporter exit, a little bit of tribal damage landing. This is the kind of chip damage that Avic's been oh, needing the whole time. LG, brilliant rail though from Rafa. Now will push Avic back for just a short moment. Again, spot him out. Avic trying to get away, trying to keep that distance he needs. Trying to keep his champions alive a little bit longer in this round. He does have the, to uh, the totem up towards the teleporter for Mega. We have a lot of time though between these two items. Needed some LG ammo for Rafa which has been flawless with in this match so far. You can just see, like, he's not afraid to go around this entire map. He, he's not worried at all about Avic setting up a trap. Yeah, he doesn't want to make a mistake. It's been almost a faultless final for him at the moment. One more round is needed. Maybe he can sneak up the bounce pad, get rid of that totem. He even finds himself a major item. Avic has got the heavy armor behind him. Again, that nail gun, he's walking into the clutter of damage. He's just below 100, 100. It's going to walk through, walk into a rocket. That hurts a lot. There's a teleporter behind him, but it's going to opt for a different route. Rafa misses what could have been a crucial rail there. And Tribal further pushing Rafa back. Control is being challenged very heavily for Rafa, and he might just... I wonder if he's going to be able to get both Mega Health and Heavy Armor afterwards. I would imagine so, especially with him playing on this high ground here. Clearly a superior position to be in, especially for both these pickups. You can see Avic going to be lurking towards the side, trying to punish Rafa for this. And Rafa even second guesses it. Here's the jump across and hits him with the rocket. So Avic does secure the Heavy, but again, you can see he's just been on the run this entire time. It doesn't seem like Avic's had control of any of these maps, of any of these rounds, yeah. really. Yeah, he's kind of playing Rafa's game at the moment. I think we've seen very, very small glimmers of it in the fights. And we could see when he was getting a lot of just like, bits of damage going on earlier. It was it was a bit more what we expect of him to be constantly 
punishing any positional plays or any, you know, if uh, Rafa happens to be exposing any angles. But Rafa now, he has the heavy armor. He's over 300 collective health and armor. He's got a couple of totems up now. He's just spotted where Havoc is, but he misses a rail while his back was turned. That tribal don't, didn't quite get rid of that totem. Yeah, both players with two totems down. You can see Rafa wants to clear this nest out. He doesn't want to allow Avic to have that overstack without forcing him to go for a fight towards Mega, which he's going to have his own overstack in about three seconds of time. So when we get to a heavy fight here, this is where things get very dangerous for Avic because he can pop this totem down, get the extra healing, and maintain some sort of overstack if he has the HP for it. But Avic has his own now too. Yeah, he just picked up that overstack in time as well. A little bit of LG, Rafa. 175 armor. There's a, all the totems have suddenly gotten rid of. But that Mega Health isn't spawn, spawning for quite a while. LG on LG. Avex not done too terribly in the fight. He's getting that nail gun out. He can't quite get the damage return. 50 health left for Avex. Oh, the rocket! It still takes him down. We've got less than a minute left of play. Avex doesn't get a bad spawn at all. He'll have the, uh, the LG. He'll have the rail. He'll yeah, have the, the rockets. Wow. He's got to make something work with this. That's a gift from the heavens, and let's see if he can make something happen. Hits the first rail. He we're about to hit sudden. Heavy. Yeah, we're about to hit sudden death too in about 30 seconds. Heavy will not be secured for Avic, unfortunately. I don't think he really has good timings on, on anything except the Vega now, which uh -oh. he's gonna be sticking around. 60 HP left. He needs to get away from this one. We can see the pressure coming in. Barely surviving the situation, but it could be happening any moment now. Rafa, he pushes through. There's only one champion to go. You got 10 seconds, Avic. Can you do anything with this? Rafa is right on the brink of another championship win. Here it is, onto the heavy. Three seconds to go, two seconds, one second. Avic can't do it. Rafa is your Dream Hack Winter 2018 champion. You know what? I'm a little speechless. You start going from Rafa is a strong contender to Rafa is very good to going, what kind of deal with the devil did he make? <laughs> <laughs> what a great performance against yeah. somebody who was just on fire the entire tournament. But, you know, we've been saying it uh, all weekend how Rafa seemed like he was a little bit on another level. And this just goes to show you. Yeah, he showed it today as well. I mean, 3-0 against Docs, 3-1 against Kilsen, and then once again, 3-0 against Avec. This is such a dominant performance. Rafa, he is up there, and he's playing amazingly well. And I'm absolutely certain that Dehang is out there going, all right, cool, you uh, you take this year. I'll, I'll get the next one. We'll, we'll oh, yeah. alternate like that. But the reign of Rafa continues title after title in Quake Champions Duel, in Quake Champions 2v2. Who's going to be able to take him down a peg? But here's the crazy thing. You absolutely know that everybody out here has a ton of respect for him because you know that if you get beaten Quake Champions, it just means that they've put in as much work as you have. He's just a consummate professional. He really is. And uh, it just shows uh, right there on stage. I mean, his performance in so many levels was was extraordinary. Um, and I, in my opinion, and I, and I said this before, and I'll, I'll say it, right here live is that, uh, in my opinion, that Rafa is the greatest Quake player of all time. Of all time. You can go through all the years of Quake, all the previous versions, and to me, uh, there's a lot of great players, but he's the greatest. Yeah, and I mean, especially just for this moment too, let it be heard loud and clear, Rafa, Liquid Rafa, is the single best Quake player in the world, and I don't think anyone would disagree after this performance. But at the same time, everybody's hot on his heels, we got Cooler, we just saw Avic be able to pull together a very close game against Cooler, and we, we, we can theorycraft about why exactly things went the way they went in the Grand Final. Um, I, I didn't want to be too correct when I said that there was no way the Grand Final could be as climatic as the semifinal because that was just absolutely insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that, like we mentioned earlier, that was one for the ages. You're going to be watching yeah. that demo, those demos or those VODs for, for a long time. Excuse my language. <laughs> but, don't, don't, don't say it out. <laughs> but no, they were truly epic games. And, um, you know, you kind of wonder if Avic was a little worn out. You saw a couple times between yeah. now. He's yeah. putting the ice pack on his hand. And, um, we talk, you know, people like maybe like the joke, but it's true. Endurance. If you haven't been here before and you haven't put in the, the type of work that these guys do, uh, it's not as easy. And as it goes work. to show that that's why Rafa's strategy is to just win 
early, win efficiently, so that <laughs> he has plenty of time to rest for the grand final. Oh yeah, and you see that just throughout the entire tournament, because when you start wearing first, your day will be over first. You no longer have to do any sort of qualification matches the way that the Hang, for example, had to do after the 2v2, and you go into the next day very fresh and ready. You get to go have a donut, but uh, yeah. I don't know what he was doing in between the matches, whether he was practicing, snoozing, or watching the other semi, but man, what a dominant performance here against Avic on every single map. I, I think we need to start adding, you know, a lot of people traditionally was always considering Rafa, he's always a strategic tactical player. I think uh, people need to start recognizing <laughs> his mechanics and putting him there with among the best. Yeah, the aim wasn't uh, too much of a, of a negative factor there at all. Okay, it was, it was okay. Probably the biggest understatement I've heard I mean, in a I mean, very, you know. very long time. The aim was amazing, let's be honest. Well, we are going to be welcoming Rafa on camera here one more time. And dude, if you are not a fan of my jokes, this is a bad way to avoid them. <laughs> No, no, I love that joke. So you're all good, Jahar. Oh, oh. Joke. Yeah, man. I mean, I said it earlier off stream. It feels like you've been up here so often that you might as well be part of the panel. You might be part of the analyst desk at this yeah, point. I, I mean, doing this is a lot of fun, but I think competing is a lot of fun now. So I'll, I'll, stick, I'll stick to playing for the One time. of these days you'll retire, and uh, I'll welcome One you. One of these days. One yeah. of these days. Well, based on his current form, I don't think that's going to be a while. And uh, sorry, I, I got some little, I got a question for you, but, um, but I want to lead into that a little bit. You know, about 12 years ago in 2006, I got a phone call from somebody you may know. His name is Zero Four. And uh, he told me that uh, I've, I think I found the next big thing that's who's going to be the next big thing in Quake and I'm like really and he said yeah let's watch this kid Rafa and here we are 12 years later and you've probably capped off one of the most dominant years uh that you could hope for what does this mean for you this um the thing that came closest and I was trying to chase this year was my performance in 2009 when Quake Live first came out and um the run that I had then and I think this year, just playing Quake Champions, I've been so much more motivated for the team play. I've had so much fun playing Sacrifice and 2v2 and just because, you know, you've been playing Duel for years and it's different like playing and preparing with yourself or just, you know, actually having a teammate and bouncing ideas back and forth and having to rely on somebody else and but also having to push yourself to the limit because he's relying on you. Like you need to help carry your teammate as well. And that's been very unique for me. and. Uh, yeah, so I've just been really motivated and, you know, going into this 2v2 is the most important for me because, you know, like I have a teammate relying on me and uh, maybe, wanted to maybe cap you up the year. This, yeah, maybe wild. you should be doing yeah. I'd, I'd be scared yeah. to drop it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just, and then after all the, I think the struggles with the first year, about first year of Duel and Quake Champions and just persevering and just believing in myself and preparation and knowing that, you know, if I keep it up, I'm going to keep making right decisions and things are going to end up going my way as long as I don't get emotional and I keep my head in the game. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that I have going for me right now is no matter what's happening, I'm still in the game constantly thinking about, you know, what needs to happen next to try to win and never say die attitude. Now, you say don't get emotional, but I did see you in between a few rounds mouthing a few words to yourself. Do you, <laughs> can, can you, is it safe for you to say what they were? Yeah, I just was trying to just psych myself up. Like I, I didn't get much sleep last night, and I've been. I had the first match today, so I've been trying to like just. I just like one more match, you know. Just keep saying one more maps, <laughs> two more maps, whatever, you know. Like just to, just keep pumped and stay focused, because you know, I'm really tired right now. I'm like I'm ready to go the whole time, go to sleep, but we'll see. Yeah perhaps a question for the future. Where do you go from here? I mean, this has been such a dominant year. You've had an amazing performance, great run. Are there still things you can you can improve on, you think, or uh, is this the peak? Uh, of course, because if there wasn't anything for me to improve on and I didn't have that attitude, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah. I wouldn't be right here. I'm always looking to improve. I think something that's improved the most for me has been my mechanics, I think, over the last couple of years. As I've just gotten more consistent with being able to fight and uh, deal out consistent damage and make quick, good decisions based off that, which is creating better opportunities for me than I used to have in the past. Um, and so I'll just, I'm just gotta stay hungry and keep working for it. And, you know, obviously tournaments aren't announced now, but really looking forward to it, John. <laughs> Tournament here, please. You yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Any day now. I mean, you said there, Machiavelli, that uh, that zero four, you know, picked Roth out anyway. So really, a lot of the credit does go to John. So thank you for, for this. Yeah. this is all, no, seriously, all. him. It's it's like at the time I had a lot of skill and I was really good, but it's like that last 
hurdle that players have to get over mm -hmm. and learning how to play and prepare properly, what your mindset should be on land, things like that, how to deal with nerves, all that stuff. And, you know, he was like an older brother to me and really helped me out in progressing me to that level. And I'm just glad that he saw the potential in me and he was willing to, you know, um, to share that with me and like try to help me get to be the best. And, and doing so, I, that's kind of why, like when I stream, I try to help everybody because I remember growing up when I was young, I didn't get to play Quake that much, like a couple weeks out of the year. And I remember like people didn't give out advice too much or servers would no. be like locked and you can't even get in them. So trying to play people that are better than you and compete, it was like, it was a struggle back then. And I want that to be different. I want, if people want to get better at the game, I want to help them. And that's as simple as that. Oh. What a sportsman. Very yeah. noble. Rafa's self-help book is coming out in quarter two <laughs> of 2019. Look for it at your nearest Walmart. Uh, but congratulations once again, dude. Uh, you said you were hungry for more competition, hungry to get better. And I think we're all hungry for anything at this point. It's been a very long day, but ladies and gentlemen, DreamHack 2018 winter is going to come to a close, and what a close it's been. Great job Just to Team it. Liquid in general. Thanks again to the production crew for sticking with, with us through thick and thin, even if the coffee machine tried to sabotage us. <laughs> so, Machiavelli, any last words from you there? Uh, great performance, Rafa. Thanks, Vic. Uh, followed you a long time, and I'm just proud of you, man. You're a true professional. Yeah, man, absolutely amazing. Congratulations. I look forward for what 2019 has in store for us. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, and a big thank you to Zoot, to Jason, to Ketchup, and of course, I am 40 Lions. I am Jahar, and I am very tired, as I'm sure everybody's looking forward to a meal and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of rest. Well-deserved, and we will see everybody very, very soon. Thank you to Monster, thank you to Corsair, thank you to DreamHack, thank you to Bethesda, and thank you again to the production crew for plugging everything back in. We're going to unplug ourselves right here, right now. Everybody have a great evening.